Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 says this. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. This is the part that I want to emphasize on my message today. And surely I am with you always to the ends of the earth. I am with you always. He has commissioned us to go. To go win souls and make disciples. But he says, don't go without me. The very end of the commission, he says, and I will always be with you. As we live our life, as he has commissioned us to have this purpose, to win souls and make disciples, to preach to all the world, to all nations, he said, don't you forget to take me with you. I want to go with you. Invite me in. Include me in. Involve me. Partner up with me. He's our senior partner. He makes all the change all the better for our lives. There's such an, throughout the scriptures, and I've said this before, is there's always an invitation to invite him. Hear what I'm saying? There's always an invitation to invite him. And he wants to invite himself. He's asking, invite me in. I want to go with you as I tell you to go, because he's the one that makes the difference. Amen. So how do we do this? Here we are. The world is against us. Everything's against us. And here he is commissioning us to go to win souls and make disciples. So how do we involve him? How do we see him be the light through us? What are the steps to it? I have three A's for you today that are simple that I want to just encourage you with on how to build that relationship with the Lord for him to shine through you. The first one is to acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. That with everything that you do is that you remind yourself that you are nothing without him. There's nothing, and, I, and I'm going to say this with, with sincerity, Without him, I am a nobody. I'm a broken person with a traumatized past, with a, with a pretty broken childhood, trying to make way, trying to figure things out. Without him, I'm a nobody. But with him, he made me into something else. He has transformed me, amen? He has transformed some of you, amen? Without him, without him, I'm a whole different person. Unrecognizable, it is him that he takes all the credit. Now, the acknowledgement factor is that when you acknowledge him, you acknowledge the fact that you're no longer God of your life, but he is. I want to say it one more time. When you acknowledge him, you acknowledge the fact that he, that he is God and no longer you. That you remove yourself off the throne and you put him on it. Saying that I'm no longer king of my life, you are. When you acknowledge the Lord every single time before you make a decision, before you go into that business, before you go into that relationship, before you go into that college, before you go into that career and you're stubborn and saying, I want to go this way, but God has been tugging you to go this way. You said, I want to be this, but he's saying, no, I called you to ministry. Whatever it is, is that you're acknowledging him saying, God, I'm choosing to talk to you, to invite you in before I make the decision. You ask before you do. That's the acknowledgement factor. One thing that I want to use as an example is mentorship. A lot of times what people make a mistake in is that when they have mentors or life group leaders in their life, what they do is that they go up to their mentor or to their leader and say, hey, I'm going into this relationship or hey, I'm going into this career. I'm doing A, B, and C. You go from before getting counsel, you're telling them what you're doing. So they not, are no longer a mentor, they're a friend. See, the difference is you go to them before you make the decision. That's where the key is to being counseled. Does that make sense? You can't get counseled into something that you already decided to do. Does that make sense? Mentorship, the reason why it becomes powerful is not so that someone can hear your decision, it's to help you make a decision. Because you're saying, hey, you know what? I don't know all the answers. I don't know all the things. I need help sometimes. We all need help sometimes, amen? But when we do that, when we acknowledge that, we acknowledge that we need that mentor to help us, to guide us, that God brought them into our lives for a reason, right? The same thing with acknowledgement. It's you ask the Lord before you do. 
I go radical about this. As it says in Proverbs 3, 5, verse 5 through 6, it says, do not lean on your own understanding, but trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Acknowledge him and then he will direct you. And so I took it serious. I started to literally ask him about everything. When it comes to being parent, when I'm a parent, I ask, Holy Spirit, help me to parent my children. They're all through. All three very different. So I want to know how to parent each child. So I invite him into my parenting. My marriage was in turmoil. So I invited Holy Spirit. I said, Lord, I want you to help me in my marriage. I'm not going to do this alone. That when I was in my career, I invited Holy Spirit. I'm, I'm not going to be growing in this career. You're going to help me get there, right? You're going to help increase me. I'm not going to do it myself. Every single area, Lord, you invite him into ministry. Are you supposed to be in ministry right now? Or are you supposed to be behind the scenes getting worked on, on your character? Or are you being stubborn and going into ministry when you're supposed to be in the back first? Are you going against what God is telling you in the season that you're in? Do you know what season you are in? Are you involving him so that he can teach you out of that season so you can go to the next one? See, sometimes we never graduate from the season that we're in because you never learned the lesson that you were in, because you never called and asked the teacher about it. You have to invite him in before you make the decision. Sometimes we invite God after we made the mistake and he has to ask and we're like, help us, help me clean it up. Now, that happens, okay? We are all humans and we make mistakes. This is not to condemn. This is to just remind us that he wants to be there for you before you make the decision. Before you go into war zone, he's wanting us to acknowledge so that we remind ourselves we are no longer kings of our life, but he is. To remove yourself off the throne and put him on the throne. Amen? Here's a practical example that I used at, my, um, at the other... Uh, services is just a small insight uh, on marriage. So my husband um, recently has taken up golfing and <laughs> he really loves it. And, I'm, and honestly, I'm really supportive and, help, and, and, and I love that because he's a really serious guy. He's always busy and all of that. So he has this outlet that he goes with some of the guys at church. So thank you, all the men. I always tell them thank you because it puts a smile on his face and it honestly relaxes him. So it's, I love it. But see here, the thing is, is that um, I've really adapted Saturdays to family days <clears throat> for about two and a half, three years. And I really wanted to protect and commit Saturdays as family days. Because see, society is after families, after our children, at schools. We all know what's happening, right? Brainwashing, mainstream, whatever you want to call it. Let's go conspiracy. I'm not going to talk about that right now. But we know that things are happening because it wants to destroy our children before they have a chance. They want to destroy the family unit saying that it's, we don't need dads. We don't need moms. We need it, whatever, however. That is not the truth. And so for me, I had a strong conviction to protect that, to show that my children, that we are present versus just paying the bills. I truly felt the conviction and the weight of that. And so I wanted to create an area of our crazy busy schedule and protect that. Now, the reason why I'm saying that is because you'll understand the dynamic here. So on Saturdays, he'll come and ask me or text me ahead of time. And he said, hey, babe, can I go golfing with the guys? And it's Saturday. <laughs> That's the reason why I'm saying because Saturdays is really, you know, important to me. And, he, and it's important to him, but he would ask me. And I have to say, when he would ask me, I melt every time. And I say, of course, go. You know, and I was like, sometimes I'm like, can't you go Friday or Monday? Or like, why does it have to be Saturday? But it is what it is. Some people work and throughout the week and all that, I get it. But because he acknowledges me, I melt and I say, all right, because well, he's a big boy, okay? He's a big, he's, he's his own person. He doesn't have, well, he does have to ask me, but I'm just saying like, I, I, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I'll, I'll get there, I promise. The reason why I'm saying is, is that he, he's acknowledging the fact, when he acknowledges me, he's acknowledging the fact that he's no longer single. Do you get that? Come on. Okay, he's acknowledging the fact that he has a partner. He's acknowledging the fact that he has a wife and a family at home and he has someone to consider. All right, are you guys following what I'm saying? 
He has to acknowledge that fact. So all the tips for married men, I don't care if you're five, 10 years in, first year in, or you're about to get married, this is a tip for you. Just acknowledge her. I tr trust me, it pays off. Now, all the woman said, and all the men say, I receive. <laughs> okay? All right, good, we're there. So this is the point, because we have to understand that we have a partner. He, he has a partner, he has me. He has to consider that, and it changes the game. The same thing with you and Jesus. The same thing with you and Holy Spirit. It's no longer just you. When you invited Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you invited Holy Spirit to be your partner. As it says in Psalms 118 verse 7, he says, the Lord is on my side as my helper. It says in John 14, John 15, John 16, how the Holy Spirit is coming here to be our partner, our comforter, our counselor, our advocate, our teacher, our reminder. Those are all aspects of Holy Spirit so that we don't do life without them, without Him. So that when you go into marriage, you can do it with being counseled, being taught, being equipped, so you can get the wisdom that you need. Does that make sense? So every decision that you make isn't a foolish one, but a wise one. Amen? Acknowledge Him, and it acknowledges the fact that you're no longer king of your life, but He is. That's the first point. Second point of acknowledgement is this is that your acknowledgement determines the outcome of the battle you're entering into. Now listen, I'm gonna say this one more time. When you acknowledge him, it determines the outcome of the battle you are entering into. Do you prefer to fight alone or with God? All of us are in a war zone or some kind of battle today. This speaks to everybody. It doesn't matter how much you smile, there's always some type of opposition that we're facing because we live on this world, right? There's a dark prince in the air and he's always trying to oppose you and fight against you. So if there is something heavy that you're dealing with or internal warfare, or if it is your war zone is your home, I don't know if you're on the verge of divorce or on the verge of bankruptcy or your son is in and out of jail and your daughter's on drugs and you're praying them, praying for them. Whatever is your war zone and battle, the things that you're believing for and hoping for, or maybe you're fighting suicidal tendencies or depression or heaviness, whatever it may be, or sickness in the body, those that may have cancer, and we're believing for healing in your body in Jesus' name. The doctor reports is not your portion. I just really sensed that as I was saying that, that there's somebody here that's had some bad medical reports and you feel like that is your conclusion. But I want to let you know that is a comma, not a period, God said. And I am the healer in Jesus' name. Amen. But we want to go into war zone. If you're fighting for your marriage, fight with for your marriage with the Lord, with Holy Spirit's guidance. Acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. See, it's not just about getting clarity out of your confusion. It is literally directing your marriage out from divorce. It's directing you out of bankruptcy. It is directing you out from bondage. He's redirecting. That's what He does. He moves and shifts things when you invite Him in. So I want to show you a video clip because uh, this movie is called H Hacksaw Ridge. Have you guys seen it? If you haven't, please watch it. It is based on a true story of a man that was such a believer uh, of God. And he goes into uh, the World War II uh, with no, he doesn't want to touch a weapon. And this is based on a true story. And here's just a, a piece of the video, of the movie a video clip, showing how every man that was on his team and all the commanders recognized that God was with him because he honored God and he involved God. And you, I want to show you just what it looks like of how you acknowledge God before you go into war zone, that you fight different and the outcome is different. So let's just take a look real quick. Powerful, powerful, powerful clip of the movie. See, Hacksaw was the most bloodiest battle of World War II. The most bloodiest. Couldn't defeat it. But because of this moment, he acknowledged the Lord, invited the Lord into the battle. They defeated Hacksaw that day. And this is a true story. And he had no weapons with him. 
I want this to speak to you in, for, at this very moment. Whatever battle you're facing, if it's addiction, invite him in. Your outcome of your battle will be different. You will no longer have a title on your forehead saying defeated. You will say victorious in the name of Jesus. Amen. I don't care if you've been addicted for 15 years, five years, but once you surrender to the Lord and say, Lord, I acknowledge you that you are king. I'm surrendering this to you. I want to tell you it's different outcome in Jesus name. So I'm encourage you, invite him into every sphere of your life. It is not foolish. I don't care if you're building a home or something with finances or if it's something that's small. The Lord cares about every detail of your life. He's all about details. He has woven you in your mother's womb in detail. He knows everything about you. And that is the second point that I want to go to is the awareness of him. Once you acknowledge him, it draws an awareness of him. That he's omnipresent. Just like that testimony that you heard is this knowing, this experience that he, the pastor was preaching about, is this knowing. You know that you know that you know that he exists and no storm in your life could ever shake that experience with off of you. The awareness of the fact that is that you're never alone. He is always with you, always by your side. That if you wake up in the middle of the night, tormented from your nightmares, he's there. That if you're driving in your car from work and you feel defeated, he is there. That when you just left sin, he is there. At any moment of the day, he is there in your worst, in your best, in your lows, in your highs, in your dark moments, in your light moments. He is always there. <laughs> Psalms 139 verse 7. This, this scripture is so beautiful. I want you to write it down so that if you ever doubt that you are alone, I want you to know is you're never alone. Never. No matter what storm, like I said, whatever you're going through. Psalms 139 verse 7 says, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, see, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Where can you go from his presence? Nowhere. In the highest of the highs or the lowest of the lows, he's always there. See, when you are aware of the fact that he is always there, you birth reverence for the Lord. It comes where you reverence the Lord. This is very powerful because some people are like, how do I reverence God where you fear God? I'm not talking about a punishable God where you have to have laws, yeses and nos in your life where like, I can't do this, I can't do that. That's religion. Okay, that's straight up religion. What I'm talking about is your genuine desire to do right because you want your relationship with the Lord to be sacred, protected, and whole. He calls you into a level of consecration. See, when you used to gossip, it felt just fine, but now that you gossip, you feel like something's wrong. It doesn't feel good anymore. It doesn't feel like an outlet. You feel like, man, I'm just you know, insulting his daughter or son. That when you have hatred in your soul, it's very uncomfortable because you are aware that God offered forgiveness. It's no longer comfortable for you to sin because you know, I'm not going to say, oh, because he's watching. Um, what I'm saying is that you're aware that he's more powerful than your defeat. That he's more powerful than the sin that draws you in. You understand that he's more powerful. You are aware and you say, Lord, help me. And he guides you and finds a way out for you so that you can be free and liberated in Jesus' name. Amen? You're aware of his presence and his power that he will pull you out versus that you're alone in the sin and you're c condemning yourself, you're ashamed of yourself, you feel dirty about yourself. But I want you to know is that when you know that Jesus is there, that you are purified, like he said in Psalms 51. He said that when you come to him, when David cried out, he said, wash me as white as snow. You understand that that is available to you. You understand that the cross is available to you, that you don't have to live under, but that you can live above in Jesus' name. That Satan is under your feet, not you. 
You replace that demon and you put him back at your feet where he belongs in Jesus' name. You trample on snakes and scorpions. Come on. So when you're aware of him, you're aware of his power, that he, you can overcome all of the defeats in your life. You're aware, you're sensitive. So when you're washing dishes, when you're driving your car, your heart, your spirit is connected to his spirit. You're praying. You may not be seeing anything, but you're praying. Your spirit is. You're talking to him, consolidating with him. Lord, what do you want to tell me? What's going on here? You just begin to fear him. He begins to be so close to you. You feel him at every move. You understand. You were truly never alone. Your grocery stores no longer become normal. Your Thanksgiving reunion will not be normal. Your going to your job is no longer normal because you become sensitive to him. And when you become sensitive to him, you become sensitive to his heart, to his spirit, to his people. So you birth not just the reverence of him, but you birth a sensitivity as well. Some of you want to know how to prophesy how to see things, how to know things before they even happen. That all comes in the package because you're constantly aware of his spirit. It's revealing things to you. You're no longer walking in the flesh, but you're walking in the spirit because you yielded your flesh. You're breaking your flesh every time because you're aware of him. You're aware of his voice. You're aware of the sacrifices and the consecration. And then something gets to begin to be birthed in you. You start dreaming things about people. You start dreaming things about uh, your own personal life. You're like, Lord, what is that? That's the root issue why I keep having bankruptcy. He starts to reveal to you why you're having problems and you're in cycles of sin or you're in cycles of torment. He then begins to reveal that's a soul wound right there. He then tells you, I want you to go do this. He starts to ask you for certain things because something next is coming, but I want to stick on this point right now is that it not just births reverence. Not only does it birth sensitivity in the spirit where you know things where you know things of people not so that you know everything no no it's so that you can bring solutions because you're the you're the child of the most high God just like this man right here they all look to him waiting they're like we won't go unless you go there's a great quote in that movie that it says they may not believe like you Dawson but they believe the way you believe they believe in how you believe they believe in your God that you believe in. So you're in that person that you're filling the gap for people. They're all gonna look to you as an answer because you are a light of God. And when you begin to break yourself and be aware of him, your spirit yields, your will breaks. And you say, Lord, not my will, but yours. And as you're aware, it releases the third A, anointing. It releases the anointing in your life. I love how Cash Luna said this, walking in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit depends on us and our obedience. Did you know that? It's not just for a few. The reason why those few is because they chose to break themselves. It hurts. It hurts to say yes when you want to say no, when your flesh is like, this hurts so bad. And when he's asking you to obey his voice, I want you to give that car away. I want you to give your uh, savings account. You're like, oh no. I rebuke that voice. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be, you know, Dave Ramsey here. And, and I'm trying to be free of all in these times of economy, you know, and we're all kind of, how do I say, getting ourselves out from hearing that voice. It's like, I want you to give away your vacation. I want you to give a gift to the person that hates you. I, wanna, I want you to go and love and bless them because we're not common people now. We're people that are light. We do things a bit different in the kingdom of God here. And so when, when he asks you to do stuff that hurts, you're hearing right. It wasn't you making up a thought in your head because Holy Spirit speaks to us visually, by the way. 
And so when he brings that up and you're like, what for God? That hurts so bad. I, that, that hurt for days when he, you gave something away. But he's, but he's testing you. He's saying, okay, I can trust her just a little bit more. I can trust him just a little bit more. You're breaking your will. You're breaking yourself. What for? You're asking for the anointing. Why? Luke 4, 18 says, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has set me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery for sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free so that we as children of God can bring a solution to those that are in need. Not me, Lord, but your will. Less of me, more of you. So that when you see people getting here in the prayer line where it says oppressed free, and you're like, oh, God only chose a couple. No, 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 no. He wants you to do some deliverance and some healing at your life group. That when you're at the grocery store, it's not a normal grocery store line. You're asking, Lord, give me a word for the person in front of me. I see she's in pain. And you see, and you're like, it's just not normal anymore. You can't live normal anymore. You're wrecked. You just see that God's children. So when you're going to the playground with your kids and you see another mom and you're like, man, I sense that she's depressed. And you're, the Lord's just telling you about her life so you can give a word because you are a solution. And when you do that solution and yield, anointing flows out of you so that Jesus can be proclaimed at the ends of the earth as he's commissioned us to do so that you can win souls and make disciples. We don't want more disciples of religion. I'm sorry. I don't, wanna, I don't want to do church. I don't want to be in ministry, to be honest, if there's no God. I don't wanna do anything, I'm telling you. I don't wanna do life group. I don't wanna counsel people. I don't wanna do anything unless God goes before me. I don't wanna do anything without Holy Spirit because the burden is too heavy to bear. I don't want it. I tried without it and it hurts too bad. When people call you and they say, my baby died in my womb, what am I supposed to do? Say, oh, that, that's, that sucks. That's our answer as humans. But because I'm God's child, I said, now hold on, let's pray. We give hope, we give light to the darkness. We say, we, we start to command spirit of death on them. So when someone comes to you and say, can you pray for me? I'm about to get divorced. They say, yes, the Lord redeems. So that when someone's sick in the body, you can't heal them. I can't heal anyone. I am incapable. I know my limit and it's nothing. So from here on, Lord, that if someone comes and prays, Jesus is Lord, you're gonna be healed. And just the first service, one lady comes up to me and asks, can you pray for me? I'm premenopausal. I have arthritis amongst all my joints and my bones. It hurts really bad even right now. I used to uh, ride horses and I have uh, grandkids. And she went from talking to crying. There's nothing I can do. Nothing. I said, well, Jesus is Lord. Do you believe that he's your healer? And the fire of the Lord just went all over her body and it left. And she was, yes, yes, because that's the anointing because that's less of me and more of him because I'm breaking myself because I don't, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to be here unless God is. I don't want to speak unless God is speaking through me. I don't want any of it. Our hearts have to be situated that way. I don't want to be married unless the Lord is the center because it will fail. I, my, my background's too much. I don't want to be in this or ministry if God isn't the center. If he doesn't go before me and he's not my, on my side, there's no point. Because we only multiply religion at that point. We got to multiply disciples, those that love and are obedient, that will break their will. Amen. That is our God. That is what he wants for you to be anointed so that when things like that happen, that you look up to the Lord, not up to yourself and say, Jesus is Lord and he will heal you because he is the healer. So from going from your life, acknowledging him, being aware of his presence and understanding that it releases the anointing into your life to make that difference that he's called us to make. Amen.
Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and this was a blessing to you, would you help us and hit thumbs up so that it could help more people to discover this video. It costs you nothing, but it can go a long way to help with the algorithm. As well as if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit subscribe, click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we upload videos. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you're interested in learning more about HungryGen, our internship, our conferences, deliverance, and so many other things, go to HungryGen.com for more information. And as always, remember, better is not good enough, the best is yet to come.